There's a massive problem with goats, and it's not the Trinity. This video is sponsored by MetaMats.com! If you guys want 10% off of the best mats, I don't know what that was. If you guys want 10% off the best mats in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, enter in the code YugiJesus on MetaMats.com and you get 10% off. Likewise, you can enter in that same code YugiJesus on LDBDuel.com and get $5 off of some awesome deck boxes from LDB Duel. I've done a video on these deck boxes. LDBDuel.com, guys, they make some awesome, awesome stuff. MetaMats.com, likewise, awesome, awesome stuff. Now, what is the problem with goats? Let's talk about that. This problem is inherent in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's luck. It's, it's inherent in every game. The luck factor in GOATS is prevalent, especially because of power cards like the Trinity, as well as Snatch Deal, Heavy Storm, Torrential Tribute, and Mirror Force. However, playing all of these cards makes matchups fair because everyone has access to the same cards, and these cards are very easy to obtain. It's not like Mirror Force is a billion dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like Pot of Greed is this rare card. You can only, it's, it's only had one print. I mean, how many prints do, does Mirror Force and Torrential have? Like, how many prints do they have? Like 80 trillion, something in the ballpark of like 80, 90 trillion? I mean, probably more. <laughs> I mean, they're probably printing more Mirror Forces and Torrential Tributes and stuff right now. Now, what mitigates luck in Yu-Gi-Oh besides skill? Your deck build. Consistency. Since both players draw six cards and goats with the old rules, that helps with consistency if you go first. The only real surge cards besides recruiters are Sangan and Thunder Dragon, which only surges itself, Gravekeeper Spy, which summons a Gravekeeper, and Reinforcement of the Army. Reinforcement of the Army is the best search card in GOAT. It is the Warrior Toolbox. You get Exiled Force, DD Warrior Lady, Blade Knight, uh, Mystic Swordsman, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. Grandmaster Sasuke. I mean, whatever great warrior monster in GOATs that you want to get, you can get it with Rhoda. I mean, unless it's, you know, higher than a level four, of course. GOATs just does not have a vast card pool full of surge cards to mitigate the luck factor always present in Yu-Gi-Oh. However, making your deck as consistent as possible is still key to winning more games just like in modern formats. Playing recruiters like Tomato and summoning Sangan in order to search your whole deck as a popular strategy and one of the best ways to make your deck consistent. And seriously, if you're not playing Sangan, you should be. Not just for the consistency factor, but for the fact that that factor fact <laughs> but, but for the fact that you don't fear mirror force or torrential tribute with sangan man sangan's so good people also complain about the format being slow <laughs> and it is slower than modern Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's also literally the same game <laughs> instead of activating a bunch of cards in your first couple of turns you activate basically the same number of cards over the course of multiple turns it's all about how you look at it it's that's it it's just more back and forth goats being stretched across multiple turns when you draw a card at the beginning of your turn adds more consistency to the format than people give it credit for because you go back and forth more and you draw at the beginning of your turn See what I'm saying? Versus modern Yu-Gi-Oh, where you got like three turns, you, you, I mean, you see a lot more of your deck through search cards and whatnot, but in GOAT, you see a lot more of your deck through actually going through your deck. So you actually go through basically the same number of cards in a match, if you think about it. Once again, it's all how you look at it. Once you figure card games out, this, it, it, everything just becomes the same, dude. But like I just said, that back and forth drawing does add more consistency to the format that people give it credit for, especially when you deck then with Thunder Dragon, Recruiter cards, or any other searchers or monsters that special summon from the deck like most popularly Gravekeeper Spy. You can also play cards like Reasoning and Monster Gate to get useful cards in the graveyard to get them back with other cards like Monster Reincarnation, Magical Stone Excavation, Premature Burial, Call of the Haunted, Magician of Faith, Mask of Darkness, and whatever else. The other thing that mitigates luck of course is skill, right? Like I briefly mentioned earlier, old formats usually have a higher ratio of skilled players fight me on it. Why? Because the card pool is set in stone and everyone knows it well. The cards in that pool also have been reprinted a billion times by now, so everyone has access to the same cards. Actually, I, didn't I say like 80 trillion? Anyways. <laughs> Most strategies are known as well. Therefore, there's not a scramble to get the best cards or quickly learn a new format to gain advantage. It's not pay to win. The cards are cheap and they've been reprinted 80 trillion, like I just said, I keep joking about. It's not pay to win. It's not scatter brain at any point because there's hardly anything new or unpredictable that's going to happen. In other words, basically everyone who plays GOATS is good, unless they're new. 
And if they're new, they're gonna get good quick. It's not hard to learn, especially from a good player, and especially if you actually play. Facetiousness and jokes aside, in short, luck is always a factor in any game. Guild format is not as sacky as people act like it is. Yu-Gi-Oh players and people on the internet in general just no brains all. Hive. <laughs> Especially because the chances of drawing every good one of like the Trinity is slim. I mean, if your opponent draws the Trinity on you, and if, I mean, they, they, they get it. Just, it happens. Get over it. <laughs> the chances of it happening are slim. You just have bad luck. That's all it comes down to. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is the same game in GOATS as it is today, just spread across more turns like I explained earlier, making gameplay go more back and forth, also like I said earlier. Now to joke around and be facetious and make fun of players, <laughs> Edison format is the same thing as GOATS basically. It has a bigger card pool and a bigger extra deck or whatever, but it's still back and forth, it's still turn, 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 turn. It's, it's the same damn thing. The double think of humans never ceases to amaze me. I love Edison format, it's a lot of fun, but people getting on this Edison hype train and completely dumping goats and then claiming that goats is just this slow, sacky thing and then playing Edison when it's slow and can be pretty sacky, you know, dandelion and other cards are cards and like, I'm, just, I'm just saying, dude. The double thing is nuts. Goats is a format to be learned, mastered, savored, and appreciated because it is the greatest of all time format. No, no, it seriously is. We, it's a format that we call goat format, and we called it that way before everyone started overusing that word. The goat is goated, you know. <laughs> way before anybody started overusing that, we had goat format. And we started calling it the greatest of all time format a long time ago. It is the best encapsulation of early competitive Yu-Gi-Oh that we have. And it is the perfect snapshot of nostalgic Yu-Gi-Oh, capturing the entire Duel Monsters era, as well as the beginnings of the GX era. In other words, you're the problem with goats by not playing it. <laughs> Goat sucks! Do us kingdom rules is where it's at! Oh, so you're going to attack the moon with giant soldier of stone. <laughs> Master Roshi would be more badass. Dragon Ball is an inferior anime and Goats is an inferior format. <laughs> oh yeah? What's good anime then, Eugene? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh, duh! <sighs> <sighs> Subscribe! <laughs>